that's DJ NGC. And that's Simply Brown. Oh, I'm sorry. Simply Red. No, no. It's Jack White? Isaac, no. Mizra Isaac Mizrahi? It's Handsome Boyfriend Dave. With oh my his God. Oh, natural curl. Which is very exciting. How about this? How about this? Last week, uh, the ladies were in a tizzy over the curl. And, oh, Doyle now from the Misfits? Is that what we're doing? <laughs> Oh, the mini hairstyles of Dave. Bob Tarasi is here and Michael Maloney is as well. Good evening. Thank you for being part of the live virtual studio audience like you are pretty much every week. We love you. <sighs> Guten Tag. Is that Mark Anthony? Is that who I see? Like J Lo's ex? No. Cooler. Hey, Mark. Welcome to the show this evening. I'm going to wait for a few more people to uh, filter into the live virtual studio audience. Hello, Jim Paracotti. Rhymes with Manicotti. Glad to have you back. Uh, I feel like I'm yelling a little. Am I yelling? It seems far away is what it is. Yeah, it seems when, far away. Well, you know, you block. You, you, we, should, we really need to have like a big X. Jessica Akers is watching and that's Jessica! all that matters. Jessica, I think of you every time I put my mask on, girl. Mm -hmm. Uh, glad to see you Well, here. it's weird that it's a Jessica Akers mask. It's kind of strange. <laughs> Jessica makes the best masks of all time because when you're not wearing them, they hang around your neck and they're fabulous. Sean O'Brien, um, I just want to let you know that you fully inspired our grocery shop this weekend. Listen, I just want to... There's spaghetti squash. I surprised, I surprised Angie. I came home with spaghetti squash and she goes... Get out of my head. I was thinking it. I meant to put it on the list, but I didn't because I didn't was, want to be a pain. What Here was the other so thing? Stuff. There was something else. Uh, paper, paper bowls. Paper bowls. I'm obsessed. With, like, paper obviously, bowls. We do a lot of paper plates because we have me messy children. Um, it's really grossy. But I'm obsessed with the paper bowls. Are you guys obsessed with the paper bowls or is it just me? Auntie Bonnie, we didn't do your hamburger soup yet, but we're on it, and thank you for the recipe. If anybody wants Auntie Bonnie's hamburger soup recipe, I will share it. Just DM me, okay? Um, we're going to go ahead and get started because there's uh, the studio is starting to fill up. I mean, there's room for everybody. It is virtual Listen, after all. Just stay six feet apart. But we do have to actually start the show. Uh, the first thing we wanted to do is say hi to Randy Fortunato, who is probably not on right now. A.K.A. Undead Randy. Undead Randy, you'll find him or, uh, we on also, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Do you have that? He, have right that? there. Oh, okay. Uh, yet another friend who has published... Here, you hold one, I'll hold okay. the other. That's, that's Decay. And this is Decay, too. And these graphics are totally yes. beautiful he, and amazing. He, he has written it, and he has done it with, um, oh my goodness, Miranda Layson, mm -hmm. I believe, is the illustrator, and Gary Barth is the proofer. So if you watch The Walking Dead or if you're into the zombie thing, these are for you. So we'll put up a link. On how you can get these, but go ahead and they look take them. place in Boston, in the Boston area. Yeah, decay and decay too. All I would say is, as soon as these came, I know you're not. Angie's not into zombies, okay? I am into zombies, Just like you read about, okay? And it's almost like zombies are old hat now. I've been, I mean, I'm so familiar, okay? You're so, you're zombie jaded. I'm a little zombie jaded. That right? being said, get the box. Yes, get these books. <laughs> okay. It's backwards. Damn it, David. They're quick reads, but they're really great. Um, I have one problem. These should have been in one book together. That's not. And there should be books multiple, work. multiple books. That's it's that's not how comic books work. It's not right? dense enough for me. I'm dense. Yes. I need I density. I understand that. So big shout out to uh, congratulations! Our, our you finally got Randy. it. He finally got them published, man. That's so awesome. And like you said, just Google Undead Randy. You will find him. And uh, if you're already a fan of The Walking Dead, man, this guy's all over it. And Meanwhile, you guys need to be pals. I have to say that I like the illustration in this better. I'm not a, I'm not a fan of the Walking Dead comic, uh, the illustrations. I'm just not. 
And okay. uh, I don't care who knows it. All right. All right? Robert Kirkman could be here, and I would I would say, I don't like your drawings. I'm blissfully unaware of who that is. I don't like your drawings, dude. <laughs> All right? You really are trying to rock the young Jack White haircut. And, right. and you're not failing, actually. It's uh, it's pretty decent. I myself am rocking the I slept in this vibe. You're, rock, you're rocking the Cindy Brady. Um, am I? Like, I'm at yes. the camera. You are my density. Aww. You are my density, yes. I was waiting my for that. Density. Uh, speaking I'm of all density. things nerdy and sci-fi, we're going to go ahead and get whoa, started. whoa. Are we going to do this already? Oh, no. You know what? We're just going to tease. We saw the new Mandalorian Listen, don't trailer, shoot your shot yet, baby. And we need to discuss all the hidden Easter eggs and whatnot. Holly Cantor is finally here. Oh, Curly Dave. You got a new nickname. Yes, she can. <laughs> Two. Instead of Curly Sue, it's Curly Dave. I like it. We're going to start off the program as we always do. We talk about things that we watched. And the then prayer? We're gonna, what? And then we're going <laughs> to... And then we're going to move on over to things we listen to, and then we're going to wrap it all up with what we ate and what we cooked, and that's the worst talk show. All right? Dan Kopko is here. What? Hey! Really? What did he say? Hey, what happened to Dave's beard? Well, Dave, what happened you know to your what? beard? You know what? The Lord giveth, <laughs> and the Lord taketh away. He comes downstairs on his way out today. I'm already online working, and he gives me a smooch, and he just pulls away a little bit and goes, and, like, he keeps staring and smiling. I'm like, what? Is there something on my face? What's she has on? the things on her face. I have no idea what he's talking about. He's like, I'm shaved. And I was like, Is there oh, something right. missing from my face? <laughs> she didn't even notice, guys. And this thing is like velvet. Oh my goodness. Uh, it is It is oh. smooth as a baby's box. Oh, it's so soft. Very nice. Uh, I love that people are like totally locked They're in. They're invested in my follicle follies. Oh wow. Did you yes. just come up with that on the spot? Off the top of my head. <laughs> All right. So let's kick it off. Oh, Jesus. With the fact that um, I got a little mad at the TV last night. Can I have snacks during the show? Oh, sure. We love to well, watch you eat. I don't want it to turn brown. I cut up some apple slices, and That's and if we wait till the end of the for. show... That's what the lemon juice But then I have for. to go get if the lemon want, juice. You, pro tip, and Sean, back me up on this. If you want your fruit to stay fresh and not turn brown after you've cut it, a little lemon juice. Same with veggies like potatoes <laughs> for potato salad. Um, so... One of the things, curmudgingly, I uh, agreed to watch, which I told you about a few weeks ago, is The Great Pottery Throwdown on HBO Max. What do you mean you agreed curmudgingly? Uh, you kept asking for us to watch it, and I kept saying, no, it's pottery. Pottery is lame. We're not watching. And you were like, let's just give it a shot. And ten minutes in, I was like, oh, my God! So, um, <laughs> well, we're yeah. on season two. And we're in the middle, almost to the end of season two. Spoiler alert, I hate Coit. There Coit. is a girl who grew up someplace else, Zimbabwe or Zimbabwe. Something. She's Irish. So she's got an Irish slash Zimbabwe um, accent. Accent, and, she, and she's got, now you spell her name. Brogue. C-A-I with Thank a little you, H over with a T. And you, sp and you pronounce it. Coit. Yeah, so it looks like Kate. It's pronounced Coit. Coitus. Coit. Oh, it talks a little bit like this. Uh, <laughs> only only <laughs> with, <laughs> with a faux, with oh. like a half oh, Irish, I I, half Zimbabwe accent. Oh, I think I screwed insane. up. I think I screwed up my pots again. The I didn't woman, have enough time. The woman never, ever finishes Listen. anything on time. All right, look, guys. All, all the uh, challenges, She's like a never cartoon on time. character. She drives me insane. I'm sure she's a lovely person. Okay? You would not want to hang out with this woman for more than but, one minute. I'm telling you. But, I mean, she's just like, so annoying. On the surface, oh, she's a little flighty and flaky, but, you know, she's uh, artistic. Like, you think, okay, maybe five minutes in, I knew I was going to hate her. All right, and so this is the thing. Surviving. She kept surviving. 
They get Wait, rid of one person. They get rid of one person every week, and she kept surviving it somehow. Meanwhile, other Somebody people, messed something up. Yeah, other people are helping her. She's not getting everything done, and somehow she keeps making it again and again. And now at this point, my jaded TV watching butt goes, they're keeping her on on purpose. Because she's, she's, ha she's hateable, right? She's like a foil. And last night, I thought again they were going to pass her through to the finals. And I was so mad. And I was literally screaming at the TV. And they finally <laughs> voted her out. She was actually yelling at the television. Like, and it wasn't, when he watches sports. And it wasn't a sporting event. I mean, can you believe it? Right? Screaming. I was screaming. Like, pack your bags! Like, I was Corey can hate you! <laughs> you bitch! I was like, don't let the door hit your ass on the way out. I mean, oh my I God. just, I could not have been happier oh my God. that Coit All right, look. is not All right. in the finals you of can't season let, two of the Pottery Throwdown. You can't let Coit run your life, okay? It's over. It's over right? now. I'm, you need I'm, to move on. I'm telling you, I immediately okay? felt better. Move on with your life. About everything. So Now, before we get off of the Great Pottery Throwdown. We have to talk about what they actually did in the semifinals. Okay, guys. To show you how involved they are, uh, they made toilets. I mean, they made toilets, guys. Yeah, not like we're just making like a cover of a toilet. No, a ceramic they made thing. actual they toilets. They made the whole toilet. That had to function. Yeah, they had to do the, the U, what is it called? The U-break? Yeah, they had, the, they had the U to keep, you know, the trap and the... You know, the I learned jets more and about everything. toilets last night than I ever I want mean, to know. I mean, it taught ever. you about the in, the innards of a toilet, man. Usually I just drink a hole in the ground and just poop in it. No, well, you've got to have a trap to trap the right. gas. Right, you don't so want the gas to come back. back and hurt. It could actually kill you. Yeah, who okay? knew? But, can we talk about Ryan's toilet? Ryan made a toilet. First of Ryan all, is Ryan a male model. Ryan is is a smoke show. And it's funny because Ryan, uh, it looks like his nose has maybe been broken a few times. He kind of looks like a He reminds like me bruiser. of John Berthum from, uh, uh, from the, the Punisher, Punisher TV series. And The Walking Dead. Right. Shane from The so, Walking Dead. I mean, and like just as hot as fire. See, I, don't, I mean, he's got, when I get my hair like, he's whatever. got the straight. And, and the, then he starts talking and he's like, hmm. Like he's just like shy no, little so, I mean, he's dude. a little bit light in the you can say it. I mean, no, you can't say that. You can't say that. Jesus Christ, Dave! No. Oh my God! Is this live? You know, you think you train somebody, and then that comes out of their mouth. That's it. Anyway, moving on. He uh, says, "Well, I'm going to make a turtle toilet," and we're all okay. like, "Okay, I'm sorry." How what? many puns are there? Like, I feel a turtle, turtle had poking out. Turtle. Okay, guys, <laughs> the toilet is so the lid of the toilet is a turtle shell. You lift up the turtle shell, and inside the toilet is painted in turtle skin. Outside the toilet, there are flippers, and the turtle's that head... Out. They're not painted They're three-dimensional. They like, they're big. Yeah. And when he was making it, I'm like, you stupid kid. How is this even going to work? And there's a big turtle head. They can't see. Wait, there's a doing. turtle head coming out between your legs. And his, his Which is like his, right? his reasoning behind it was, you know, when you're trying to get the kids to potty train, they're afraid of the toilet. Right. So I want to make a toilet that he they totally... can feel like comfortable, like it's a toy. But then he was like, Oh yeah, and by the way, uh because it wasn't their responsibility to, to decorate the lid. He actually made the lid like he hand painted fabric. the fabric and covered the and lid. And it was puffy, so it was yeah. shaped like a turtle he, shell. Soup to nuts, it was like... And the, then when he when he flushed it, it was like... <laughs> I mean, it could have... You know, like the Toto toilet. It can flush 14 golf balls. Like, it's like... Yeah, no, it was, per, it was it so was well It was an executed. actual toilet that worked like it so, was supposed to work. Google, and I was amazed. Google right now, turtle toilet... Pottery throwdown, so you can I mean, see what we're talking I mean, about. I, it was magnificent, and he. If he there was, was any say, toilet I wanted to poop in. Yeah, I mean it, it was gorgeous inside and out. I couldn't believe it, and and of course he won, and and now we go to the finals, which we'll probably watch directly after the show because that's how hooked 
we are on the Great Pottery Throwdown. Um, I what also, can I say? We're old. By the way, if you don't do the U-break correctly in a toilet, the water shoots directly out at you as you flush, which we saw somebody <laughs> do as well, which was hilarious. One of the judges got soaked. So, um, so I is always try fun. not to yell so loud at the television during the Pottery Throwdown, which I can't even believe I'm confessing to you that I like. Hey, listen. It happens in Stoke-on-Trent, okay? The, the, the name of Stoke's football club is the Potters. Yeah. I mean, listen. Famous the world over for, for uh, China. We've already told you several times during the pandemic, nothing soothes us like the sound of British oh, accents. British accents. Whether it's Cockney or like highbrow. Or oh, yeah. I don't even and know what they're to, all called. We're getting to be able to tell them the dialects. A little you know, bit, all yeah. Are, are separate from each other. Yeah. Like we know like... <laughs> Well, we know Northern. when somebody's from Swindon because we Northern. have a pal from Swindon. Northern, uh, you know, yeah. up in like Liverpool. <laughs> well, Liverpool's you know, pretty easy. Liverpool's more like you know <laughs> the Beatles. They talk like that, you know. Really, the Beatles are from Liverpool. So, but then like crazy. they're much more refined down south in the, in the London area, and you could just kind of and then like Wales is a whole different thing. Scotland is a different thing. Wales is just Scottish, but a little light. It's like liltier. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. um, so eventually we'll be moving there. Okay. Anyway, moving right along. Now that we—that's our show. <gasps> Jim Murray's here. Joey Jim Murray Chang is here. Hi, Jim Murray. What? I not, haven't been not, watching. Not, not big Jim Murray from. No, 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 no. We're talking about our amazing pal Jim Murray. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean. Well, there are two in my the life. Ginger, so the I, ginger yeah, Adonis. This is the ginger Adonis. Uh, we need to talk about The Mandalorian Season 2, you guys. The second trailer dropped, and we're a little obsessed. Okay, and look. Yes, we watched one of those full breakdown shows where they and, go frame by frame and, and I gotta show tell you everything. You, it's awesome, because we're yeah. Star Wars nerds. You might I don't not know have, if you've noticed. You might not have noticed. You might. I don't know. But anyhow, this person, I love it when we get online and somebody is nerdier than us. They would teach us a lesson in nerddom well, people when it comes don't to this. Know. Like they see this sort of stuff and they think that we're like a top level nerd. Not even close. No, I mean not we're not even know. close. No, even with all our gadgets, people, there are levels they can oh, yeah, no. take it's... you into the depths of, uh, you know, the names of planets and systems and I'm just companies like, that make uh, starfighters and like yeah. weapons. And, you know, okay, so anyhow, The Mandalorian Season 2 trailer. Trailer 2. Now, I'm going to tell you, this thing's coming out in less than two weeks. It's like a week and a couple of days. It'll be our last respite before... I can't, I can't wait, January. okay? But let me rattle off a couple of names, okay? I have them right here. I know them off the top oh, of my head! Really? All right. Okay? I don't need your cheat, cheat card. Rosario Dawson. Who's playing... Ahsoka. Wait, and for those that may be our casual watchers, She's a it's Jedi the big, huge... With the two uh, things in the air. Now, somebody who is a real nerd would know what that species was. But anyway... I don't. I digress. <clears throat> Michael Bean, a la... The Terminator. The Terminator. The very and Aliens. Uh, Kyle Reese, right? Yeah, Kyle Reese from The Terminator. He's yeah. going to be in it. We okay? like him. Uh, Timothy Oliphant's gonna be in it. Love Timothy. O or Oliphant, as you... I think it's Oliphant, but okay. whatever. He's gonna be in it. Uh, uh, Temuera Morrison, who is Django Fett, is who gonna is play Boba Fett! Boba Fett is back, bitches, and we told y'all! I can't believe it! Last season, second oh. to last episode, somebody walks up, and you can hear spurs. Spurs. And the, and you can hear some of their electronic gear. Yeah. And it makes a certain sound. And that is the sound of Boba Fett. And they broke it Empire, down. From Empire Strikes Back uh, in Cloud City. We were so we glad. We recognized that. We knew it. We told everybody. They were like, they're not really bringing and, Boba look, Fett To back. be fair, Angie called it. She's like, those are spurs. Who has spurs? Becky Ross is here. We're geeking out on Star Wars Mandalorian. Now, hold on. Katie Sackhoff's gonna be in the in the thing. You mean so you got Battlestar Galactica Starbuck from Battlestar Galactica. You got Galactica? Battlestar Galactica. You got Aliens, the Terminator. Okay, you got Hitman number forty-seven. 
Uh, what else do you need? You got, oh, wait a minute. Uh, Rosario Dawson's been in, in, um, Death Proof. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, Ro as far as action Dawson goes. She was also in Sin City. Yeah, she, you really, all you have to say is Rosario Dawson. She's kind of wonderful. Uh, Holly is calling us nerds. Thank you. Total compliment. Um, so there is actually a scene, if you freeze frame, it looks like the Mandalorian has uh, Boba Fett's uh, gear to, like tied to the back of his um, speeder. Uh, so that could be that he has taken Boba Fett's armor and is bringing it back to Boba Fett because he's been in hiding this time. You know why? After crawling himself out of the Sarlacc. Do you know why? Why? Because this is the way. That's right. If he had to put it on, he couldn't take it off again. So he's been living undercover. That's my theory. So the guy who played Jango Fett um, in all the prequels, and of course we know that uh, Boba was his clone son... Is going to. Uh, there's just no. The there's real no deal. more argument. Boba I'm, Fett is okay. back and ready to party. Hey, G Anthony. Giancarlo Esposito is going to be in it. You know, like with his I'm, black saber. Oh, with the with the dark saber. The dark oh my saber. god. It's going to oh be. Oh my epic. god. We're very excited. Uh, we hope you are too. But we don't want to waste a whole show on it because some people actually don't know what we're talking about or particularly care for our Star Wars culture. Yeah, but they're not our friends. Some of them actually are. Anthony um, Paglia. Paglia? Yeah. Paglia. Yeah. Anthony Paglia. I Paglia. think it's Paglia. Hey, Paglia. Yeah. Uh, Anthony, correct us. Oh, gosh. Glad you're here. Um, we like to call them Pags. So, Lovecraft Country. We've been on the fence the whole time. Season finale. <sighs> what did you guys think? Did you watch it? Well, I'm sure some of them watched it. Um... I was a little underwhelmed, frankly. Yeah. A lot of beautiful scenes, a lot of uh, great sort of aha moments, but still, as a foundation, a little underwhelming, I felt. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Hippolyta was rocking it. She was cool by the yeah. end of it. And the whole Tulsa thing was amazing and, now, and that's, going back okay. in, in time, but we talked about that last Is week. Is it only me, though? Ah, uh, Smolenyak, she said meh. And I agree. Right. It's very meh. Michael Maloney, that's no baloney. Yeah, it was rushed at the end. It just very wasn't rushed. that great. Yeah, it really isn't. But honestly, I, I'm hearing that the book it's based off is not that great either. Um, it's sort of a misnomer that, you know, it's Lovecraft. Like, you think it's an, a lost H.P. Lovecraft story. It's not. I mean, it obviously it's takes It's tangentially yeah. related. Um, oh, we're getting very highbrow. Um, so we did not love that. Uh, I, we finished Nosferatu. Again, if you're looking for a quick, fun two-season thing to, to binge, um, it's great. I loved it. The, yeah, it is. It's fun. The last episode was a little rushed. I think also they felt like they were going to get another season out of it uh, before it was canceled, so they probably didn't tie up every loose end as, as tight as they If could. I may, if I may, there's a little bit of... If anybody's familiar with Phantasm from back in the day, mm -hmm. okay, the whole dirt bike culture, you know, and the rebel kid fighting the the demonic, you know, oh, bad sure. guy. All those elements of okay? there. It's nothing new. If but, you love yeah. Phantasm with Jody and uh, I forget who else was in that, but like, it's like that. Yeah. Okay. It's very, although it's Stephen King's son who wrote it, right? It's a story it, it, from Stephen King's It absolutely Sun. honors the it King definitely, universe. Definitely, if, if you, you remember, will. like, if you take you back to, like, Stephen King's anti-heroes, it's kind of that. It's gritty. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's kind of like, it, it, it's okay. Now, speaking of Stephen King, are we looking forward to the remake or the reboot of The Stand? Or no? Uh, you know what? I could take it or leave it. The first one was like, Meh. See, I love the first one. They have to make sure that, I mean, who's doing it? Um, offhand, I don't know. I know the Whoopi Goldberg. If they can't have it be, if they can't have it be like rated R, it's not going to be good. I don't think it's rated R, but I don't quote me on that. Um, we also watched the space related. Um, yes. The right stuff. The right stuff on Disney Plus. I know you guys don't all have Disney Plus, but I got to tell you, I wanted no part of this. Thinking I saw the movie. What the hell do I need to see this for? Realistic it's, you're space just stuff. Rebooting. A series for people who are too young to remember the movie. The movie, right. Um, it's fantastic. We loved it. Yep. They only give you, you know, once again, 
like a good drug pusher. The first hit, few hits are free, and then you gotta pay. And that's it. Um, they only give you the first three episodes, and then you have to wait, which is terrible. I hate doing that. I want to watch all I my stuff, binge and it, I want to watch it now. I want to slam it! Right? Holly Cantor, when does the new season of The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel start? I don't know, but... Holly! We're on it. We'll find you, out. Listen. How dare you change the subject like that? Uh, I'm very... Nicole's My neck hurts. ...says that she's waiting for the stand. She's excited. So... Yeah. I, we definitely, we should all sort of watch that together and see what's what. Um, the finale of The Vow, for those of you into the cult documentary show on HBO, what a whimper, man. It didn't, it came in with a whimper, it went out with a whimper. He's gross. I mean, the guy is gross, we're glad that he's in jail, and everybody oh, else... Oh, he's in jail, is yeah, he? Yeah, yeah, he is, and everybody else is being, you know, sentenced soon or whatever, but as far as cults go, they were kind of boring. I mean, they're no Branch Davidians. Am I right? No, definitely not. Um, what else did we watch? I started okay. watching Monsterland today. Have you guys today. seen anybody? Monsterland. Do we have I'm to talk about today? Two episodes in. It's based on a, a series of short stories, so each episode is, what do you call it, episodic? It is an anthology. Anthology. So each episode is not related to the other. Correct. They're Except in the same vein. There's a some sort of monster. It's probably come out... In October for um, Halloween. I do like it, though. The whole documentary is so weird and feels fake. Yeah, Nicole, I know it's not because I read the headlines and I couldn't believe the chick from Smallville was involved at all. But that being said, there's a whole other documentary coming out about Catherine Oxenberg's daughter that she agreed to do. So we're going to have to watch India? it all. Yeah. Is that what I mean? Again, on, like, Netflix or Showtime or whatever. Holly, I'm just kidding. All right? Holly, I thought the It is about television. TV. Did it you hurt Holly's feelings? I think I did. Holly, please, pay no mind. First it was the hair. Loud bark. Now it's that. Loud bark. Now, hold on a second. <laughs> if I could get to what I was thinking about. I don't know. How, Can you? Uh, Television-wise, I might have started watching The Watchmen again. Yeah, this is like your third time No, watching it's it. not, okay? It no. is. Excuse it me. Is. Can I just get to what I was talking about? It is the third time. I'm holding my breath. Go Can I ahead. finish? Yes, go ahead. All right, finish. so anyhow, guys, I'm kind of obsessed with off-the-grid uh, type shows. Building homes off the grid. Uh, what is it? Living off the grid. Um, oh, what the heck is that? Listen, oh, he's starting Homestead to turn, Rescue. He's starting to turn into a, a disaster prepper, an apocalypse guys, prepper. Guys... He wants to, like, be ready for if things don't go so well. I just want to be weeks. ready. And we understand that. But this is quality television time. And, you know, you can you can watch a show about building a yurt and an arsenal in the yurt on your own time. Okay? Okay, don't start with me about jump up. Okay? <laughs> it's fascinating because I, I'm interested in, you know, passive homes where, like, they're super energy efficient... And they're totally, um, when something's a homestead, it's totally self-sufficient, you know? And that idea is it's fascinating. Fully, it's fully sustainable. Yes, it's, and it's fascinating. Buzzword. Um, Check it out. We also started watching the TV show Next, which is, I believe, on Fox, which means you'll get into it and then it'll get canceled because that's what happens with all Fox shows. It's AI. It's about AI going berserk. But it, like we told you last week, it's got John Slattery from Mad Men as the C St crazy Steve Jobs guy. And uh, it's interesting. I, I, you know, it's we'll, okay. It, we'll I haven't... stay for another episode. Yeah. Maybe. Mm -hmm. um, but beyond that, we're not really sure. And that's sort of everything we have going on with TV. Are you guys watching anything that we should be walk watching? Yurts sound like nerds. I know. Isn't that funny? I think um, nerds love yurts and vice versa. <laughs> Anybody um, watching the uh, World Series? Well, you got all the, LA, my, LA, the LA Dodgers. Yeah, the Doyers, Los Doyers. Versus the uh, Tampa Bay Rays. All my LA uh, pals are watching, but, but did you watch one um, game of the Red Sox this year? I can honestly tell you, as much as I love the Sox, didn't watch a single I game. I actually this don't year. think I did. I might have, I might, yeah, I just. 
Yeah. Wasn't interested in them coming back with this shortened season and the whole thing. Really and, shortened and no, season. And no crowd. Like, just was not interested. Felt like it was a big waste of time. Uh, Sean but, O'Brien says, Mystic Pop-Up Bar is really fun. Mystic Pop-Up Bar. Explain, Sean. Please to explain, sir. Mystic Pop-Up Bar. Unless he's he's speaking to somebody else in the thread Maybe. as they're watching, which is totally fine. Have at it. Now, here's the thing. If the Dodgers win it, that means the Lakers won it and the Dodgers won I mean... Yeah, and some of my L.A. friends were like, we really need this. And I'm yeah, like, yeah, you guys need we it. all need everything right now. Yeah, Thank yeah. you. I mean, granted, the wildfires are insane. Um, you know, pandemic is through the roof. COVID is through the roof right now. And, uh, and you know, you some got this... political party keeps putting out fake ballot boxes as well. So. And maybe there's a guy saying, yeah, you know... I don't think I'm going to help you guys out with any money, you know. Yeah. Any so, disaster relief. So, yes, L.A. Because, you know, you're not very nice to me. You if do you're nice to me. Kind of bad. Uh, Sean says, I'm definitely watching baseball because it is my life. All right, fine. Nikki T is here, still on Lucifer and Kim's Convenience. Uh, it's a show about a convenience store. All right, then. Uh, a Korean-owned convenience oh, store, I think okay, it is. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, yeah, it's a Korean supernatural comedy drama thing. It's fun. All right. We'll have to check that out. Um, we did want to go on to what we're listening to, but I got to tell you, we got to pour one out. Tony Lewis, lead singer of The Outfield. We've lost your love. That's it. Josie's no longer on a vacation far away. Yep. To the great hereafter. 62 years young. Uh, of course, He's nobody second... gave a crap about the bass player who the... wrote... All the songs. No, no, no. He is the bass player. No, um, all right. Well, the guitar somebody player. else. The guitar player. He died of cancer as well. Yeah, but nobody, years ago. nobody cared. Of course, we care about the lead singer I because still we're think, human. That's what happens. Guys. To Jerry Mylan. Your, uh, musicians, your love, the song, it's missing like a whole verse. It's, it's. It is a weirdly. It, it, it's too um, short. Constructed song. You're it's not too wrong. short. Yeah. It's missing a verse. But. And, you know, and it's a song you want to keep going on. It's a great song. I mean, anybody starts with uh, Josie and somebody else will come right in and finish the line. I mean, yeah. it's an iconic song. Um, and uh, it's sad that, that he is no longer with us. Also, uh, Spencer Davis of the Spencer Davis Group died. How old is that gentleman? Uh, I think he was in his 80s, I'm thinking. Uh, not to be confused with Spencer Davies, who is very much alive uh, as of um, two minutes Spencer ago. Davis Group uh, had Steve Winwood as the uh, as the uh, yeah. So um, little that Stevie would be Winwood. Uh, yes, little Stevie. He was very young at the time. That was um, pre. So um, Spencer Davis. Their most famous song is um, what? Oh my God! It just went out of my head. <laughs> you just said it. It's not. Hold on. It's a. Uh, well, my temperature's rising and my feet... Yeah. So, give me some loving. Give me some loving is the most famous. However, Picture I'm a, a man... Little, a little British guy. Little British kid singing that song. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm a man. Yes, I am. And I tell you that I love you so... Isn't that them as well? I'm a man. Yeah, that was their other big head note. And I had that in my head all day I don't remember today. that one as theirs. Well... That, unless that was a totally different song, I could be making that up. Uh, Dan Kafko, can you confirm? I'm a man also. Give me some loving, Besides, that's right. give me some loving. I'm pretty sure that was them, though. I'm a man, yes I am. And I love you so... I don't know all the lyrics. <laughs> I'm not a lyric girl, never have been, never will be. Uh, Dave makes fun of me constantly, I sing the wrong lyrics to everything. One good thing about watching television shows... With closed captioning on, sometimes they play songs that you've known forever. And because it's closed captioning, you're like, they say that? Well, sometimes it's right and sometimes it's not. It depends on what kind of closed captioning they're using or if they're actually taking from the script. What was it? Uh, is it Desmond Decker? Who did the Israelites? Who does the... Uh, oh, I, I thought Desmond Israelites. Decker was his own thing, but it's so possible. Anyway. Yeah. I'm the man also, yes, Dan. Okay. You are the man, Dan. We weren't planning on asking trivia questions, but thank you for confirming. Um, so, 
I am still pretty much locked on to listening to Salem State College Radio, my alma mater, yep. WMWM. Yeah. And I turned the car on yesterday and heard this really great sounding song. And I was like, oh my God, I know who this is, but I don't know who this is. And I actually had to Shazam it because they don't have the BDS readout on um, the uh, thing in your car that tells you what song is playing. WM doesn't have that. So I shazammed it, and it was Mellow Bravo. Local band, Mellow Bravo. Anyone, anyone. Uh, it was so comforting to hear. So I was really excited and happy that WM uh, did that to me. And then you heard something. Okay, look. <laughs> <laughs> I'm out today, as I am wont to do on occasion. Running errands and such. So I was out because I had to get a certain item for a certain lady. So... I was near, I had to go to Job Lot. And Job Lot's right near Savers. Now, I'm contractually obligated to go into Savers it's like whenever a I'm magnet. there. He can't walk by Whenever Savers I'm there, to I'm, I, I have to go into Savers just to look. There could be a bargain waiting for me. Or there could be a Star Wars toy Let me or tell you something. something. He has walked out of Savers successfully with like. $400 leather jacket for like $5. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's a like, thing. It's a know, thing, right? Star Wars memorabilia only, that's worth a, a few nickels. Like I got a pair of boots. Well. A, I got a pair of boots like uh, three weeks ago that... Were brand new. They're brand new, unworn. Uh, they're actually military spec. And on yeah. the website that I bought my work boots off of, they're $300. And how much did you buy them for? Fifteen dollars later, I'm walking around in these boots. So it it's a thing, right? What is going on with your hair? I don't know, man. You know, I did ask you if you wanted to wear your hat. You're messing. And with I your said hair. no. I said I'm I'm gonna wear my hat. I don't want to horrify everyone. And you were like, oh no, people love your hair. Well, they do. They talk about it all the time. But you can't keep touching it. It's weird. It's the uh, smell. Nikki T, Mellow Bravo rules. Yes, they do. It's the smell. Oh, so here's the thing. It's the smell of a bargain. Oh, I'm in. Oh, it, or is it the smell of a um, of a thrift shop? Anyway. Could be both. Oh wait, what did I see there today? Oh, I forgot to tell you. What? What did you see? Remember, the <laughs> fi remember. remember the Fisher Price turntable that was in a suitcase yes i let i left it there why it was next to the fisher price go with hey the hey case? it was next to the fisher price airport for the little people and this was the real deal this was like ancient uh the schoolhouse the so it was like a whole the fisher airport price set? the fisher price i, I the record player, though, Dave. We don't have shame. any money, guys. We 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 po. Yeah, but we don't go have any to money. Savers. Walk into Savers when we have no money. I like to, you know, I'm a masochist. What can I say? You can go ahead and make fun of me and what I actually asked for now. By the way, if you want, go ahead. It's kind of a George Bailey haircut. Oh, when it's when it's slicked back, it looks good. All I'll right, I'll lasso the moon for right. you, Mary. What? what do you want, Mary? You you want the moon? You know. <laughs> oh my goodness so he he texts me and he's like i'm going i'm running into a job lot what do you want and i was immediately like one thousand flushes okay listen let's not even get into it okay one thousand flushes they don't even make a product called one thousand flushes guys what i was gonna say is that angie joined the blue water navy uh recently she's discovered two thousand flushes and it makes a lovely, lovely blue lagoon in the bathroom. Listen, we have a lot of people in the house all the time, and they all use people the downstairs are pooping, bathroom. People pooping, and you don't want to see that, the remnants of it. We've already talked about toilets quite a bit on this episode. Um, so however, we're not getting any money for this. The blue water is fabulous. 2,000 flushes. It's, you know what? It's backwards. <laughs> but I'll tell you, it lasts up to four months. Uh, it's just nice to have, you know, good smells happening. Okay? Just leave me alone. Oh, by um, the way, the whole thing about Savers, I heard Best Coast on the, on the uh, like the Muzak, 
Yeah, so Dave tells me, oh, I heard Best Coast today. And yeah, Dave feeling was, okay, I like, right? I was like, feeling oh. Feeling okay? Oh. And he goes, what? I'm like, that means we're old. Whenever you hear a song you really like in a effing store that isn't like a hip, cool shop, I think it means you're old, doesn't yeah. it? I mean, Best Coast is like after our time. Toilet time with Curly. Have you tried <laughs> po uh, poopery? We have that in there as well. We are a poopery family. I drink that me? stuff. There are three men that live here. Listen, women are smelly in their own way, but boy, do those boys love to damage a bathroom. Poopery is a must. Thank you. Smash up! Uh, huge shout out this Friday. Oh, wait. Boston Emissions <laughs> turning 12 this week. So Angel is celebrating. She's this a tween. Yeah. By the way, Angel, I like to call her mother of bulldogs. She is the mother of bulldogs and a pug or two. Um, so we're it's a uh, menagerie. We might, uh, if you check out the show Friday night, there's a live stream for Boston Emissions and the 12th uh, birthday party, if you will. Um, you might see some familiar faces say hello at some point. It could happen. She fell in love with the drummer. Fell in love with the drummer. <laughs> so happy birthday to Boston Emissions, Angel. We love you. Oh, we love you, Angel. Um, this is the part of the show where we move on to things that we ate. Now is the time on Sprockets when we eat. Um, so... We take we took a little bit of a break from the cabbage noodles this week. We even brought some talk about <laughs> bathroom stuff. We even brought the zoodles back in. We haven't done any zucchini noodles in quite a while, so we did some zoodles last night. But I threw them in the stir fry. I know, totally shaking things up. Um, we did Taco Tuesday, which is pretty good. Although out of nowhere, Dave decides he no longer likes the taco seasoning we've been using. Since we've started Listen, living together three I, years I ago. I don't know. I mean, I, maybe it's too much cumin. I don't know. <laughs> hey, Angel is there. Angel, will you tell everybody how they can watch Friday? Just to make sure everybody knows. That would be great. Oh, thank you. By the way, say hello to my good friend, Paul Gallo. We love PG. Listen, he's a rebel in his own mind. <laughs> watch out for that one. Paul is kind of a firecracker. Totally fun to hang around with. Oh, my God. So much fun. Um, so everything but the bagel seasoning, did I tell you about this last week? I'm all over it. I even did avocado toast with the everything but the bagel seasoning, like a basic biatch, and it is delicious. <laughs> I'm only Cuban. Very funny, Jerry. Very funny. You're allowed to make mistakes. By the way, uh, Jerry has a new dog that's a corgi something mix, and it is adorable. I, like, I can't get enough of the photos. Okay. I do have to say, I'm not a huge fan of corgis. Okay, first of all, yes, they're it's a British dog. Okay, they're beautiful to look and, and, at. And if anybody grew up when we grew up, corgi is the name of a company. You know, there's Hot Wheels, there's Matchbox. Corgi is the name of a company in England that made, you know, diecast models of cars. And I used to have a corgi DB8 007 car that actually had an ejector seat. And machine gun uh, headlights. And, uh, yeah, it was super cool. Anyway. Back to the cute dogs. Listen. what I saw a video online this week. It's a cattle dog corgi. I mean, come on, right? Of the corgi in the guy's backpack. <gasps> Have you guys seen Have this? Have you guys seen this thing? It's uh, this guy who carries his corgi around in a like backpack. Like on the subway on and the stuff? On the subway. And the, the corgi is just so happy, like... He's like, nah. he always films the corgi when the corgi's just about to like fall He's asleep. He's like dozing. He's totally chilling out. Google He'll it. like lick the guy's ear It'll a little bit. It'll make you so happy. Greg Conley is here. We're not worthy. We're not worthy. <laughs> uh, Greg is the co-host with uh, Scott Janovitz on that lovely podcast we like to listen oh, to. Oh, we do like that. Citizen, Citizen Critic. Citizen Critic. If you mm -hmm. guys need a podcast to listen to, Citizen Critic. Although I have to admit I haven't listened lately. Uh, well, we haven't listened to a lot lately. Okay, yeah, like, I, I haven't been listening to Dust lately, like, I, I yeah. We, uh, we apologize. There are definitely things that have fallen by the wayside because we are on the hustle to make some scratch. Trying because to. Because we are in a hole. Like, I, I know a lot of you are. We are, too. <laughs> Greg said, oh, stop. I mean, don't stop. Um, 
I did want to say another big shout out to Sean O'Brien, who is uh, the worst talk show's resident chef. Or, uh, you know, chef, like an artist. He's in like the green grocer of our He's show. He's the chef in residence. Um, he spoke so eloquently about uh, spaghetti squash last week. We have spaghetti squash. It is in the kitchen. Oh, it's going to happen. We are going to make it probably tomorrow. Listen, there might be brown sugar involved. I don't know. Oh, no. Uh-uh. This is Maybe the I'm way. Right. A lot of butter. I always make brown sugar. Now, I do tend to make it with butter, but you can do <laughs> you it with. You always make brown sugar. Sorry. Uh, spaghetti squash. I do tend to use a lot of butter instead of EVOO. What? Kenny Simmons and Lewis Warren. Kenny Simmons and Lewis Warren? Like, yes. together? Hi. Lewis, where were you last week? I was all over Nosferatu, and I'm pretty sure you told me to watch it. Hmm. So um, you do get props. All right, so spaghetti squash, really easy. A lot of people are like, I have no idea how to make it. You just cut that gourd in half. You can remove the stem. If, are you out of your you know, gourd? Um, cut it in half. Pull the pulp out the same way you would pull the seeds out of a pumpkin, right? You can just use a spoon. It's very easy. And then you just want to salt and pepper. And you can either cover it with extra virgin olive oil or what I like to do is I take a stick of butter and I split it in half. And I put one Stop half it. of each. And then uh, you just turn them over so it's cut side down in a big glass uh, baking dish. So when, it, and when the, the butter, butter melts, underneath it. it tries to work its way out. And the butter browns a little bit. It, it browns just, the whole you'll surface. You'll know when it's done. I usually just throw it in for 350 and I cook it for probably about 20, 25 minutes. You'll know it's done when you go with the grabbers and you try to squish it and it all collapses. And then you just uh, pull everything out and it tastes like al dente spaghetti. And you're not eating any carbs. And it's delightful. So there you go. Uh, Lewis Wan wants to know, uh, what do hillbillies do on Halloween? I don't know, Lewis Wan. Pumpkin. That's terrible. Uh, Jim Park Hottie says, my wife tells me I'm not allowed to yell, oh my gourd. Really? Oh my gourd! It's decorative gourd season, hey, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just poke it. It rules. So thank you, Sean. Uh, we will be delightfully eating spaghetti squash try it. this week. Bob, try it. All right, guys. Um, I know we talked about this earlier, but it is officially time for the Dave intervention. Okay, guys, listen. Dave, ha an intervention. I can. You have to sit there while your up. loved ones tell you how much we love you, but you're going a little crazy with the Henry's chicken salad. It has not, a container of Henry's chicken salad has been in our kitchen, in our refrigerator. This is crap. This is bull. For at least six weeks. And when I say a container, I mean it gets eaten and magically gets refilled, a.k.a. brought home from the store. And, like, I don't think he can stop. I can stop anytime I want. I just don't want to. There is nothing like Henry's chicken salad because they take the chicken salad and they throw it into a food processor so it's almost like a paste. And there's just something about it because one thing that freaks most people out with chicken salad is it's chunky and then they get a piece of, what, do you, what would you even call that? Not bristle, but you know what I'm oh, talking yeah, about. Bristle. Connective tissue, perhaps. Oh, and people are like, oh, that's gross. Um, and that doesn't really happen with Henry's chicken ever, so... Did you take out a loan to buy the chicken salad? <laughs> they thought we were going to do an intervention on your guitars, Lewis. They keep I've all the guitars. Lewis, <laughs> why'd you bring up my guitars, Oh, Lewis, dude? you don't even want to go there. Hornet's Nest. Uh, I did put a moratorium last year on no more guitars coming into the house for a while. I think it was two years ago. And then on lockdown during the pandemic, I lifted the ban. But I was very responsible. Let's, yeah, you were. I was very responsible. Cartilage, most likely. Yes, Lewis, you're probably right. Yeah, it's almost like chicken pate. You're not wrong. And there, I know it sounds disgusting. It's marvelous. I grew up with it. It's a North Shore it's got thing. Little, Henry's it's Beverly got Mass. little bits of uh, celery in it. Yeah, it's just delightful. And it's something that we had. Uh, if you grew up on the North Shore, Henry's chicken salad and Henry's deviled ham were in the little sandwiches for all funerals and baby showers. It was like a staple. Um, and so I introduced Dave to it, well, probably six weeks ago, and now he's a full-blown addict. Six weeks ago? At least. It's just, it's like the magic Angie container doesn't understand of Henry's time. chicken salad. She's, uh, she's into time travel and stuff, but she doesn't get the concept. I'm just saying, Dave, perhaps maybe we could go a week without it in the house. Perhaps. 
I'm not going a week without it in my Lewis, belly. Lewis, you're not mouthy tonight. I'm mouthy tonight. I um, hope so. Yeah, right? See? Lewis says he loved them. So, um, that's all we really have on the food stuff. Um, anything else we cooked or ate this week that was... First of all, I kicked ass with my chicken teriyaki stir fry last night. I threw a little honey in the marinade at the end. Yeah, I only needed to use a sandblaster to clean the wok. The wok uh, did get a little sticky on the Talk bottom. Talk about the wok of shame. He did, <laughs> he did have to get the razor blade out. and. Whoosh. I use a, a plastic razor from uh, Ace Hardware. Yeah, yeah. But it was good, and right? Was it not super tasty? It, it actually shaved off of the wok in curls. Like if you were like, if you were doing chocolate, if you were shaving chocolate, Listen, it curls up. Listen, sugar burns and it gets attached to anything, whether it's the grill or, but it tastes delightful. It was it very good. It marinades and rubs. What can I tell it you? It was very good. It was very oh, good. Oh, Holly, we're not fighting. Trust me. You'll know when we're fighting. <laughs> You'll hear it all the way at Revere Beach. By the way, we took a lovely joy ride the other day. A we jaunt, drove we like right to say. by your new place. And we were like, hi, Holly. And uh, we is checked it out. Drift is downstairs, yes? Yeah, I think we've already talked about this. But Holly, oh man, we can't wait to come visit to you. To be able to walk to the tea. Oh my God. Yeah, I mean, Revere Beach, it, it's like you almost don't recognize it. But it's, No, I don't. From it's, my childhood? No, definitely not from your childhood. Mm -mm. No. Um, so don't forget uh, for, you know, to, she says stop by. We can't just stop by, especially if we don't have a gift to give you. And it's during a pandemic. But the second that is over, we're coming, Holly. And we're bringing Henry's chicken. <laughs> don't forget and to I might it. even share some with you. Um, thank you guys for joining us tonight on the uh, live virtual studio audience. Melanie Cousin, you're just showing up now. Oh really? my god! Really? Um, we I love you either way. Melanie Cousin, I totes thought of you guys uh, the other night I was watching. The off North the Face grid. Is? Off the grid. They're the kind of off the grid kind of people. They are. Young, outdoorsy types. They're who very like to hike, outdoorsy. Ski, snowboard, whatever. They also look good. It's kind of an They also place. like to hunt. You know, yetis and stuff like that. Hey, George Drillis is on. Hi, George. We're nearing the end of the show tonight, but fear not. Um, the finished product of tonight's show will be up on uh, Abington Cameras. Um, There's no way that we're almost YouTube done. YouTube page. We are almost done. -uh. So I just want to let everybody know that everybody that's been a part of the show tonight. You will be featured in the finished product, which goes on the Abcam YouTube page this weekend. And then all episodes run Friday nights at 9 on television. Now, we are already in 10 separate markets. Ask your provider to go ahead and carry the worst talk show. Um, we are part of like the national pool now, so they can pull those shows out and broadcast them. Um, in all different markets for community access television. And you get to be television superstars. If we talk about you specifically, it'll actually blow up what you've texted and what we're referring to on screen. Hi, George. It's pretty cool. So, you know, we don't like to brag or anything, but we're totally like the Wayne and Garth of 2020. Dude, we're like growing like a fungus. We're like spreading out and just like... We certainly our are. Our tendrils are getting into everything. So check your local listings for the Worst Talk Show. And of course, call your provider and request it by name. Michael Maloney says, new main Cabin Masters episodes coming soon. Do you watch that show? No, I haven't heard of it. Oh, well now you have. And now you'll have to watch and report back. <sighs> I'm telling you. Hey, you know that feeling you get when, like, you drive way out of your way and, like, try to go to do something and you checked out the website of this place and it didn't say anything about making an appointment and you show up. Oh, I do not want to hear this And they're story. like, yeah, um, if you could, like, call us and, like, make an appointment... That'd be really good. Dave, we've talked about this concept that is foreign to you. Making a plan. Planning ahead. All you had to do was call the place and say, hey, we're coming by. Do we need to make an appointment? Listen, I wasn't the only one. 
Yes, was the other party uh, of the female persuasion? Because we can all plan and you can't. No, it, it was a down man. Oh, really? It was another member yeah, of your DNA pool. Yeah, but you know, he is, pool. he is Harvard grad. Uh, he's uh, Harvard educated, so. Normally, uh, he does plan ahead. However, neither of you thought that maybe you should call and make sure that things were in stock and that you could look at them and ask somebody questions. I don't know. Would you rather be over-prepared or under-prepared? I mean, Route 128 is lovely this time of year. <laughs> and there you have it, everybody. We're ending a few minutes early, but we, we love you. There's yeah. still stuff to talk about. It's 825. We're going to talk about how you didn't plan and you're mad. Dave shaved his beard off today. I see your point. So, yes, make sure you ask for the worst talk show. Check your local listings and call your local cable provider. Katie Russell Summers is watching right at the end of the show. Hey, Katie. Hi. We, uh, the virtual live studio audience is every Wednesday night from 7.30 to 8.30 Eastern Standard Time. I feel like we're forgetting something. Are we forgetting anything? No, definitely watch Boston Emissions uh, live stream. This Friday night, we can't wait. Happy birthday. Happy 12th birthday to Boston Emissions. And Angel is on here, and she will tell you exactly how to watch it. Angel Wood, a.k.a. Mother of Bulldogs. I like it. I like it a lot. We love you guys, and we will see you next week, and we will see all of you on TV. Thank you. Bye. Credits are rolling.